Hello friends, my name is Hannah, welcome to my channel. If you're new here, lovely to have you. If you're returning, thanks for coming. This is the start of a new reading vlog and as you will probably be able to tell from the title slash thumbnail, this is a bit of a weird one. I am less than 30 seconds into this vlog and I already regret it, but let me backtrack a second. So. A few months ago, I decided that the way to tackle all of these on red books on my shelf was to set myself the challenge of doing different themed vlogs to try and like get through my physical TBR. I put a load of different prompts in the jar. I then promptly forgot about all of the prompts that were in the jar and I put I pulled out a prompt yesterday for what I was doing this vlog and it is, if you are a user of Storygraph, you may have come across um, the reading challenge on there for We Didn't Start the Fire, so the, the Billy Joel song, We Didn't Start the Fire. Um, so Storygraph, if you don't know, is um, it's a bit like Goodreads, but I personally prefer it to Goodreads. Um, and you can log your reading on there, but they also have tons of different reading challenges that you can engage with just for a bit of fun. Um, and the We Didn't Start the Fire one, basically for the first verse and chorus, I think it is, first couple of verses, uh, there's a prompt for every word. So, for example, Marilyn Monroe is um, a book by a popular author. I, I'm going to insert some here while I talk and I'll just scroll through so you can have a look. Um, so the prompt I pulled out was to to do a vlog where I tick off 15 of those prompts. So that's fine because you can do multiple prompts from one book, right? Cool, fine, chill. Except right before I came to look at my bookcases, I did something so stupid, I want to like punch myself in the face. I decided I hadn't updated the challenge for a while. So I went through the books I've read in the last couple of months and like updated all of the prompts. So now I'm only left with like really like hard ones or ones that aren't obvious or that don't naturally kind of like fit in my normal reading taste or whatever. So basically I've just made it 10 times harder for myself. but. Never mind, we shall persevere. So, the plan for this vlog. I have three books here that I think are going to cover at least three prompts each. Normally, I read multiple books at a time, but for the, for the sake of this vlog, I'm gonna go sequentially because some of the prompts, I kind of have to read the book to know if I can choose that prompt for it. I'm making this sound incredibly complicated. It's not that complicated, but basically I want to read the books in sequence um, in case I end up not needing to read one of the books or other prompts end up getting covered by a different book, la la la. So I am going to start with the book I'm most excited about on this little short list. And that is Yellowface by R.F. Quang, Rebecca F. Quang. Um, I have not read Babel. I know it is universally beloved and I would like to get to it at some point, but the premise of this appeals to me a little bit more. So this is essentially about um, two female authors, one of whom is like a literary darling, the other one is basically nobody. And, um, the darling dies and the nobody steals the manuscript of the book she was working on and basically claims it as her own. So the prompts that I think this will cover, I haven't written down helpfully, they're like, we didn't start the fire prompt. I've just written down like what it needs to have. So uh, this, R.F. Crying is a very popular author. So this is the Marilyn, this would hit the Marilyn Monroe prompt for read a book by a popular author. 
Uh, one of the prompts is also about um, reading a book with theft in. This is about theft. Um, and then there's another one that's like a book that you feel like everyone else is reading but you. I have seen this book everywhere. Everywhere, everywhere, everywhere. So it's definitely going to cover those three. It may end up covering more. So we're going to start with this one and then probably move on to um, Goodbye to Berlin by Christopher Isherwood, um, which um, famously uh, is what Cabaret is adapted from. Um, so this is a classic. There are prompts around... Um, books set with controlling governments, hello Nazis, um, having, there's one about having a place name in the title, so goodbye to Berlin, and there's one that's like, this is the question mark, because it's a book you like by an author who is no longer living, now Christopher Isherwood is no longer living, I don't yet know if I like this book, but Fingers crossed and hopefully. So that's one that we'll get to, hopefully. And the final one, um, which actually I may, we'll see how I'm going. I, I think I might do this one second, but she's a bit of a chunkier one. Uh, this is another one that I'm really looking forward to getting to though. This is Great Circle by Maggie Shipstead with a horrible buy one get one half price Waterstone sticker on. <laughs> um, this is, I believe, a split timeline and it is in part, yes it is, oh this is actually going to do more than I thought, or oh, maybe I have to start with this one, no I'm definitely starting with yellow face. Excuse my external internal monologue. Um, the, this is a book that is about a, a woman I think, one of the, either one of the first women or a woman. Yeah, who wants to circumnavigate the globe pole to pole, so she's a pilot, remember that. Um, so it's partly her life and then partly the life of an actress who is then preparing to play her in a biopic. Now, there are prompts for a book featuring a pilot slash engineer slash astronaut. Andronaut is what I was going to say. Astronaut. So we got that pilot. Um, there is a book featuring acting. There is one for a book that's set in more than one continent. Now this is literally doing a poll to poll. So if this is not set in more than one continent, I am going to be so surprised. Um, and the final one, I think there's one around like a book that features a momentous achievement. Now, I don't know if this woman actually makes it and does the poll to poll. But let's assume she does, and let's assume that's a momentous achievement. So, that's the plan for now. Now, the numerically minded of you will be thinking, <laughs> that doesn't add up to 15, and you are correct. It does not. Um, but here's the thing. I'm going to read these books officially as part of this vlog. Now, because I'm gonna have to read them one after the other, which is not how I normally read, I will be reading other things, just other things. A couple for other projects, a couple just like, whatever, I'm a mood reader, I might just pick something up. If, during the life cycle of this vlog, any of my other reading happens to hit any of the other prompts, I'm going to count it in my 15, okay? Um, I probably won't because I don't want this vlog to be like hours long. <laughs> I probably won't talk in detail about those books, um, but I might. But I will definitely mention the book that I read and which prompt it covered. So, that is the plan. I cannot tell you how excited I am to start this book. I'm so happy that I've been able to fit it into this vlog. Um, I just, this is so fucking hyped, man. And here's what I hope doesn't happen. There is a prompt for a book that you were disappointed by. As much as I am desperate to be cranking up the prompts, I really, really better not 
end up using that for this book. I don't think I will. Lots of people whose opinion I really respect and whose taste often aligns with my own are like constantly talking about how much they're loving this book. I cannot wait. But yes, let's let's crack on with some reading, eh, shall we? See you in a bit. Day. This is just to say that it's currently 6am and I have only had about five hours sleep because I stayed up real late to read Yellowface and look at that mist. So I'll check in with you later or maybe I'll just fucking finish it. I'm two thirds of the way through and for me I haven't picked up another book since I started it which for me is very rare. Very very rare. I like to flip between things. Um, so yeah. <gasps> Good, 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 good. Hi. I don't know why I couldn't take a sip of that before hitting record. I've read this book. Um, I don't really know what to say about this. That isn't being said by thousands of people on the internet already. This is brilliant. It's brilliant. Um, I finished it a couple of days ago, actually, this, and um, I just haven't really had time to film a, a film a wrap up. But I just think it was it was thrilling in a way that I wasn't expecting a book about essentially writing. Yes, the theft of someone's writing, but writing. I didn't expect it to be like a page turner, and like it really really was. I just, I don't know what I've got to say about it that hasn't already been said by lots of other people. Um, it is satirical as hell. It is in parts exasperated and angry, but then sort of humble and, and reflective. And Essentially, it's a, it's a book about, that's asking the question, who has the right to tell certain stories? And I think the way that Rebecca F. Quaring explores that through the prism of sort of, through publishing, but then also looking at kind of appropriation, particularly, as you'd expect, the sort of appropriation, um, specifically experienced maybe by um, Asian and Southeast Asian authors, but more broadly, anyone who isn't kind of white, um, heterosexual, cisgendered writer. Um, and it's, it's so interesting. The central character, June, the one who steals the manuscript, I think her character is so interesting because on the one hand, what she's done is awful. And on the other hand, you're like, you see how, you could see how she was pushed towards doing it. Um, the, the way Rebecca, the way Rebecca F. Quang releases information to you as a reader is really deftly done because every time you think someone is irredeemable you see a little bit of the other side of the coin and not enough not enough to overlook what they've done but enough to make you pause and think and yeah I just I just thought it was great <laughs> um, there was a little bit, maybe about three quarters of the way through, as, as we were approaching the kind of, the, 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 the final sort of act of the book, 
where I felt like the pacing was like a little bit off and things were happening in a little bit of a weird way. And then literally three pages later, she sort of acknowledges that in the in the text and it's kind of part of this. It, it, it's so clever. She's so, so clever. And I just, I really, rec I, I really recommend it. I really recommend it. I think it's great. Um, in terms of my prompts, um, this book has seen me to my first five prompts. So we are covering Marilyn Monroe, a book by a popular author, Watergate, a book featuring theft, Since the World's Been Turning, a book that everyone's read but not me, Roy Cohn, a book featuring a lawyer. Now the lawyer doesn't feature very prevalently in this, but the themes surrounding the lawyer is, in, is enough in this book to make me feel like, yes, it works. And also like, this isn't fucking school and whatever. Um, and also China's Under Martial Law, which is a book featuring university students and June met Athena at university. And there are lots of flashbacks to when they were at university. And then June then subsequently also teaches university students. So five, that's not bad, eh? Um, and you know how I was like, I may well, I may well be reading other things. Well, I listened to the audiobook of Ruby Fruit Jungle by Rita Mae Brown, which was narrated by Anna Paquin. I'm not going to talk about that book in detail, so, but it's it's a, a classic queer um, book published in the 70s and I, I really enjoyed it. But it's also got me one, two, three, four, five, poten like potentially another five prompts. Um, Studebaker featuring a car. Brooklyn's Got a set in New York. Alabama set in the southern United States. It's it's a coming of age story. She travels around a lot. It's in both of those locations. Um, Kerouac featuring a road trip. That's how the main character gets between Florida and New York. Um, and Communist Block, a book featuring rebellion and what made this book such a runaway success when it was first published was that the main character Molly is really unapologetically herself. She's a lesbian. And that hadn't been seen before in literature, really, at least in Western literature. And so I think rebellion works both in terms of Molly herself being quite a rebellious character who is unwilling to kowtow to whatever society wants from her, but also that the book itself was quite rebellious. So I'm actually, I'm actually up to 10 and I have started reading Great Circle by Maggie Shipstead. I'm only 40 pages in, but I'm loving this so far. Um, like really, really loving it. So I, I may get 20 prompts out of this video, you know. lovely little swim at Willy Bay and uh, 
I was planning on getting more footage at the beach than I did, so I am just briefly prefacing this in case you wondered why I'm showing you seven seconds of content. <laughs> so um, here it is, coming up, seven seconds of beach content and vegan apricot ice cream from Demeos. <laughs> Can I have a second? Can you sit down? That's great. I do have an update for you when Lewin lets me talk. Okay, can you sit down? Good boy. Can you sit down? Good boy. Yeah, well done. Um, hello. I finished Great Circle. This is the best book I've read all year. It's so funny because I was, I had a weird reluctance to read this book. I, I don't know if it was the, the blurb or kind of the cover. It's very women's contemporary fiction, that cover, isn't it? Um, but I thought I was, I'm sorry if you can hear him chewing his own leg. Um, yeah, I don't know what it was that put me off, but my friend Evie read it and we have identical taste in books pretty much. And she said, oh no, you've got to read it because it's brilliant. And I was like, okay. I just, I think, I think because the way it was described to me was, it's about this female pilot and then it's about the actress playing her and I, I, I thought it sounded like it could be quite surface level. This is anything but surface level and I think this is the most impressive feat of imagination I ever read in a historical fiction book ever. Because I thought at first that Marion Graves was a real person. Um, she's not. But that just made it even more impressive because the depth of understanding that Maggie Shipstead has about her characters, where they're from, their values, their, their ambitions, their hopes, their fears were so fully realised that I can imagine the, like, these people exist for me and that does not happen very often that, like, I completely felt they never said anything or did anything that didn't feel completely who they were and I just think that that's extraordinary and I don't, I don't even know what else to say. There's, like so much nuance to the world as well and I think her her writing is that perfect blend of lyrical and poetic but also dramatic and moving the plot forward so she can take 20, 30 page digressions into giving you the history of some place because A, she makes it interesting and it all feels like it serves the plot but also I had complete faith that she was only telling me that which I needed to know in order to enrich my understanding of what was going on. Like, even though this is quite a long book, it's just under 700 pages. It was... There wasn't anything there. Like, there were no sections in this where I thought, that didn't need to be there. Or like, oh, that could have come out. Um, and I just... I just think it... 
it was utterly brilliant. It was horrifying and liberating and just compulsively, compulsively wonderful. And I will definitely be rereading it. And I wholeheartedly, completely recommend it to anyone for anything. I don't care what you normally like reading, read this book. Like, I can't believe it didn't win. I can't believe it didn't win the Women's Prize. But like, I mean, yeah. It's gonna stay with me. The characters are gonna stay with me. The, the feelings and thoughts I had while I was reading it are gonna stay with me. And for Hannah Lost the Plot, that's a big deal. So that's how I feel about the book. Now, importantly, the whole purpose of this video is about hitting those prompts, right? So, where are we? This book has ticked off five prompts on the uh, old reading challenge. We have John Glenn, a book featuring a pilot, engineer or astronaut. Liston Beats Patterson, a book that surprised me because again, this was a book that I thought, mm, yeah, like seems good, but like, <coughs> excuse me, Lewin. <laughs> I didn't, I did not think I was going to read this book and think that's the best thing I'm going to read this year. And definitely after reading Yellowface previously in this vlog and really, really liking it, I, I didn't expect this book to top that. It surprised me. Um, Moonshot is a book about a momentous achievement. As I said, this is a... Marion is... Um, undertaking a pole-to-pole -pole circumnavigation of the globe. Pretty momentous achievement. Um, Reagan, featuring acting, and Homeless Vets, uh, a book that is set on more than one continent. So this is set, uh, parts of it in Antarctica, um, parts of it in um, New Zealand, parts of it in uh, Asia, parts of it in Europe and parts of it in... Actually, I think we went to all the continents. We went to all the continents at, at least once. Um, so it definitely covers that, which I think takes my current total up to 15 books. Uh, so I have technically already completed the challenge of 15 prompts, but I, I'm gonna read Goodbye to Berlin anyway, because I may as well, um, and it's not very long. Um, having said that, I. <laughs> This vlog is taking much longer than I thought it would, but um, yeah. So that's been Great Circle. Absolutely loved it. And um, it's now Monday night. We are about to go to the cinema to see the new Wes Anderson film, which I'm excited for, even though I really didn't like his last one. Um, and then I'm going to London tomorrow. So depending on how much I get read on the train or while I'm down in London, I may check in with you then, or I may see you when I get back, but probably the next full clip you get of me, unless something goes real sideways, is probably just gonna be a wrap up of Goodbye to Berlin and then this whole vlog, I think because this has taken quite a long time, but this was a big old book and I was really, really wanting to take my time with it because I was enjoying it so much. I, I, I know it is a cliche to say it, but I genuinely did not want this to end. But the upshot of that is that this vlog, I've now been filming for quite some time. <laughs> For fuck's sake. Um, there we go.
gonna level with you. I just sat down to start editing this vlog and realised I never finished filming it. <laughs> Whoops. Uh, note to self, don't ever film multiple vlogs concurrently because this brain, not advanced enough to cope with that. Um, but I have finished reading Goodbye to Berlin by Christopher Isherwood. Um, and I'm I'm glad, the reason I, I like doing challenges like this, particularly for the tackling the TBR stuff, is because this has been sat on my bookcase for ages. And I don't know if you experience the same thing with classics sometimes, that like, there's just not much urgency to get to them because, you know, it's not like the latest releases or it's just been on a prize and often people aren't talking about them in the kind of like social media spaces that I'm in. I mean, not that people don't talk about classics. I just mean like, there's not tons of people talking specifically about Christopher Isherwood. Um, so I, I don't know when I would have got to this without this particular challenge. And I'm really glad because I, I did like this. It wasn't what I expected. I don't really know what I expected, but all that I knew about this was that it it's the source material for Cabaret. That's that's all I knew. And Cabaret obviously has those kind of hard hitting themes. It is, you know, set during the rise of the Nazi party in Berlin. And that is definitely there. But there was a lot of hedonism and kind of glamour in the musical that I don't think was really in this book. This reminded me, and this is the first time I've read Christopher Isherwood. I think maybe I've read like an extract in um, a queer anthology before of his, but it's the first time I've read like a, a full book by him. And I wasn't prepared for how much it would remind me of Orwell. And then I had that thought and then looked at the back and it says, it's got a pull quote from George Orwell on it. So I'm like, oh, well. Um, this kind of reminded me of Down and Out in Paris and London for a couple of reasons. Partly because it's got that sort of autofiction style to it. Um, because the main character in this is Christopher Isherwood. Um, he doesn't give himself another name. He is referred to as Mr. Isherwood or Christopher throughout this book. So in lots of ways it kind of feels like non-fiction and it leaves you wondering how much of it was fiction, how much of it was um, was what happened to him. So it's basically, actually that's a, a pretty good description by George Orwell, brilliant sketches of a society in decay. That is what this book is. Um, so it's glimpses of Christopher Isherwood's life in Berlin and surrounding areas. He's not always in Berlin, actually. Um, in the early 30s. So the it's on almost like pretty much on the eve, I think, of my... <sighs> my history is not always brilliant, but it's like on the eve of Hitler becoming chancellor. Um, so the Nazis are very much around, um, but they're not yet, you know, fully in power. Um, and it, again, a bit like Orwell, it's got this kind of, it's quite sparsely written. Um, and it really is just kind of snatches of his life. Every sort of chapter is a kind of focus on a different person or a different like part of his life, a different relationship that he has in Berlin. And it's quite, that is quite an interesting structure actually, because definitely towards the end, you realize that actually all of these chapters are not like sequential and they all kind of overlay onto each other. And so, in there's there's a section Sally Bowles is is in this as as she is in Cabaret, but her role is much smaller in this than it is in Cabaret. Um and she's never in a relationship with Christopher Isherwood. Um and 
she this her chapter ends with sort of them not seeing each other again then like that's sort of the end of their relationship they never saw each other again the end of their friendship but she crops up in later chapters because they all kind of like happen at the same time um so that was interesting there is no plot to speak of um again kind of like your down and out in Paris and London's Burmese days sort of things like it's an interesting insightful look into people's lives in a very kind of unvarnished way um that I did enjoy reading about but I wouldn't recommend this to someone who needs a plot to sustain their interest in a book because there, there isn't a plot here um but on the whole, I really, I did really enjoy reading it. It's really uncomfortable reading. So this was published, I think, in 19, was it published in 1935? Mm -hmm. uh, is it going to tell me? Is it going to? Oh, so, I'm sorry, published in 1939. So right on the breakout of the war then. Um... And it's so unsettling because you have quite a mixture of opinions. It's not overtly political in the way Orwell is. I should be careful with that comparison, actually. Um, but it is... You know, for example, that Isherwood is nervous about the Nazis, doesn't like that they're coming. And actually, like, it's part of the reason that he resolves to leave Berlin. Um, but some people are sort of like, yeah, they're not great, but, um, and some people are, are terrified and particularly some of the Jewish characters are not super, super concerned yet. Um, and so it's got this really horrible, you, it's a really horrible experience reading it now, knowing what then transpires in the subsequent years and knowing that some of those people were entirely not seeing the direction of travel that it was going in and equally some people were and I sort of don't know what is more tragic it's all tragic um but that was really that hung really heavy in the reading experience obviously um and yeah so I, I do, I do think I recommend it. Um, and the important part of this vlog, what prompts did it kick off? So let's do a quick, a quick recap of all of the prompts that I've hit off so far. So way back at the beginning of this vlog, I read Yellow Face and that gave me five prompts. I got Marilyn Monroe, reading a popular author, Watergate, a book featuring theft, um, Since the World's Been Burning, a book that everyone's read, Roy Cohn, featuring a lawyer, and China's Under Martial Law, a book that features um, university students. Then I'll do the books I officially read as part of this vlog first. So we've we'd got a yellow face. Then we had Great Circle, and that had John Glenn, um, a book featuring a pilot, engineer or astronaut. Uh, Liston Beats Patterson, a book that surprised me. Moonshot, a book featuring a momentous achievement. Reagan, a book featuring acting. And Homeless Vets, a book set on more than one continent. And Goodbye to Berlin gave me um, Pam and Jim, a book with a place in the title. Goodbye to Berlin. Um, North Korea, a book featuring a controlling government. I know the Nazis aren't fully, fully in power in this book, but I mean, come on, let me have it. Um, Joe McCarthy, a book set in the Cold War era. And Pasternak, a book that I liked, because I did like it, by an author who is no longer living. Um, so those take me to 14, right? I can't even remember how many of these I was, was I supposed to be doing 15? We're fine, because you will recall that Ruby Fruit Jungle by Rita Mae Brown that I read earlier this month. 
gave me five too. That gave me Studebaker, a book featuring a car. Um, Brooklyn's got a, set, a book set in New York. Alabama, Southern United States. Kerouac, Road Trip. And Communist Block, a book featuring Rebellion. I have also read um, That Reminds Me by Derek Awusu, which features, oh, what was the name of it? Oh no, I can't find it. Fast forward. Crack, a book featuring drug addiction, um, which is a, a great book that I will be talking about in my July wrap up. Um, I also read um, Open Throat by Henry Hoke, and that gave me two. That gave me Davy Crockett, a book set in the wilderness, and California Baseball, a book set in California. And I also read Penance by Eliza Clark, which sadly gave me Bay of Pigs, a book that didn't meet my expectations. And if you want to know why, I've linked the vlog where I read Penance down below. I also read Open Throat in that vlog, a book which very much did meet my expectations. Um, so that, quick maths, brings me up to 15, 20, 23. Boom, baby. I just made the dog jump. Oh, sorry, baby. Um, pretty effing chuffed with that. Um, I'm sorry that the, <laughs> the, the vibe of this vlog was a bit fractured. And also, like, if you don't use Storygraph and you aren't doing the We Didn't Start the Fire challenge, I don't even know how interesting this vlog will have been. But hey, um, if you are doing it, these books are all really good for ticking off some of those prompts. So I recommend them. I, I, I really enjoyed all of them. Um, so if you need to tick off any of those prompts, may I recommend any of these titles? Um, I, I was going to see if I could wrap up. Like I was just thinking about if I could do this style vlog again to try and finish the challenge. But I think that would be a lot more books. I don't think I've got that many books left on my shelf that could like hit multiple ones, but let me know. I mean, I don't know. What 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 are your thoughts on on this on this vlog? I don't know. I don't know. Um hey, if you are here, let me know in the comments down below like did did the theme of this vlog make any sense to you at all or are you just like fuck it whatever you're only on in the background while I do my washing up? Um, do let me know anyway um, what you're reading at the moment because I'm always nosy uh, if you've read anything great if you've read anything mm, not so great no actually just tell me the stuff that's great I don't care about what's not great um, and yeah I will see you soon for another video tatty bye for now bye <laughs>